To make yourself more focused on the present moment, consider reducing the amount of time you spend on social media. I never check social media on my phone and check my email only on rare occasions when I'm waiting for an important reply. With fewer distractions, I'm able to better focus on the now and avoid mindless actions that would threaten my long-term goals. Let's recap, what is your why? The reason you want to achieve a particular goal can make or break your resolutions. With a powerful why, you'll have a much easier time resisting temptations. When faced with a craving, pause and remind yourself of the reason why you want to resist it. Giving in to cravings is an impulse. If you give yourself a minute or two to think, your self-control mechanism will kick in and help you avoid ruining your progress. Visualization sets you for success, but only if you visualize like the sports pros do, by envisioning every single step on your journey toward the goal. When you prepare yourself for all the actions you need to take, you will be more likely to stick to your resolutions than when you envision reaching the goal alone. Be selective with the goals you want to achieve. If your goal doesn't fire you up, no amount of self-discipline will help you achieve it. Live in the present moment. Reduce the number of distractions around you and become more mindful of your surroundings, especially when shopping. Chapter 3. Dopamine. Your enemy and your friend. Dopamine is a mind-numbing complex neurotransmitter whose role in our bodies I leave to real scientists to explain. What should interest you the most about dopamine is one of its pathways known as the mesolimbic pathway. Relax, I'm not going to describe the structure of the brain. This pathway starts in the cells deep in the middle of the brain and travels to the nucleus accumbens. If you want to understand the how, it doesn't really matter where the hell the nucleus accumbens is. A dopamine release that occurs this way leads to what most people consider the only role of dopamine, a spike that feels like motivation or pleasure. Drugs, sex, and exercise all lead to a surge in dopamine, which gives us a feel-good sensation. In reality, though, dopamine has little to do with happiness. Its release happens each time you're presented with a cue you associated with a reward. The mere sight of a cue say, a cigarette, will increase the level of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens. It produces a craving that, if not met, will lead to a decrease in dopamine. As all of us can attest, an unmet craving and subsequent drop in dopamine doesn't feel good. That's one of the reasons why it's so hard to resist a temptation. Your brain works against you, making you fixated on obtaining the reward signaled by the cue. What you get when you give in and satisfy the urge isn't even happiness. It's just relief from the anxiety of not getting what your brain wanted. What can we do to have a fair chance against dopamine? The most important technique is to be aware of a dopamine rush and cues that cause it. Self-awareness will help you mitigate the clouding effect of dopamine on your decision-making process. Dopamine responds to thought, sight, smell, and taste. It's an impulse that encourages you to satisfy a craving right here, right now. The effect of a dopamine rush is the strongest when the reward is right in front of you. The less available the reward is, the more chances you'll have of resisting it. If you always cave to temptation when you see a chocolate bar on your desk, get it out of your sight. The mere act of opening a drawer can be enough to help you exert your self-control. Better yet, get the chocolate bar out of your house and reward yourself only when you schedule it. If you're shopping, avoid wandering into the aisles with foods that will trigger your reward center. For increased self-discipline, eat before you go shopping to be less sensitive to the scents and sights of food. Dopamine seeks instant gratification, which is rarely aligned with your long-term goals. Fortunately, the mechanism that makes the temptation so irresistible gets weaker with time. Waiting on a craving for, say, 10 minutes 
will either make it go away completely or reduce its intensity. How do you deal with a dopamine rush when a thought about a cue appears in your mind? It all comes back to your big why. Acknowledge your craving and let the feeling wander through your body. Then switch your attention to the reason why you're resisting it. If possible, come up with a short-term reward that signals getting closer to your big goal. For instance, looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing a change in your appearance. No matter what you do, don't obsess about letting go of the thought of the temptation. Just like saying, don't think about a pink elephant, will make you think about one, so will, don't think about this tasty sweet piece of cake, keep you thinking about what you want to forget. Dopamine can be your friend, too. Although dopamine can work against you, it's not an evil neurotransmitter just waiting to find yet another temptation and break your long-term goals. Insert maniacal laughter. Its mechanism can also help you modify your bad behaviors and turn them into good ones. It can also help you develop new habits and make them automated, thus rendering the level of your self-discipline irrelevant since the behavior will happen with no resistance. Dopamine motivates you to give in to a temptation because it expects a reward. It responds to a cue that your brain associated with a specific outcome, like the rush of sugar. Bad rewards aren't the only rewards your reward center craves, though. If you train your brain to react with a dopamine rush at the sight of your running shoes because of the reward coming right after it, say, a smoothie, you'll find yourself craving to get outside and jog. And the best part is that you don't even have to exert your self-control. It's your dopamine that motivates you to perform the task. The key to dopamine is that it produces the most powerful rush when the reward is in sight. If you want to form a habit to jog three times a week, you can associate it with drinking a smoothie when you go back home, or reading a book for an hour, or an afternoon nap. When your brain starts associating the cue, putting on running shoes, with the reward, a smoothie afterward, it will work to help get you off the couch. If you're separated from your goal by several weeks or several months, break it down into smaller actions and reward yourself for each one. Motivation will build up as you achieve small wins. A smoothie delivered right after the workout will motivate you much better than the vision of getting fit several weeks or months from now. Even something as simple as listening to your favorite music while running can be enough to help you stick to a new habit. How can you motivate yourself by using the promise of reward? What gets you going and can make an unpleasant chore easier to perform? Here are several rewards you can test to introduce new routines into your life with less resistance. Number one, food. Obviously, if you're trying to lose weight, you should reward yourself with healthy, low-calorie snacks, fruits, nuts, vegetables. Number two, experience. Experiences give us more lasting happiness than things. Consequently, it's better to motivate yourself with the promise of going out with your friends than buying a new piece of clothing or a new gadget especially if you're trying to develop a habit to save money. Number three, music. Studies show that music reduces the perception of effort at low to moderate intensity of exercises by approximately 10%. The perspective of listening to your favorite tracks while jogging will reduce the resistance to get your body moving. Number four, a break. A common time management technique the Pomodoro Technique helps with procrastination because it breaks down every task in a 25-minute block. After 25 minutes, you get a 5-minute break. Scheduling such breaks helps you get to work. The promise of a break produces a burst of dopamine and reduces distractions. Number 5. A Nap Motivate yourself to perform a task by promising yourself a short nap afterwards. A short, 15-minute nap will increase your alertness and help you focus on other tasks for the day. Number 6. Plan something pleasant. Since the vision of holidays is too far off in the future, 
A better alternative is to reward yourself with browsing through travel magazines or websites and researching potential destinations. Planning is half the fun and works like a charm to motivate yourself to finish a project. Number 7. Relieve the Tension Get a massage, cuddle with your partner, meditate, go to a sauna, or take a walk. If you know there's a stress-relieving reward waiting for you right after finishing a given task, you'll have an easier time doing it. Number 8. Novelty Dopamine responds to novelty. If you have a hard time leaving home for the gym, come up with a new exercise you're going to try. Try a climbing wall instead of running on a treadmill, or attending a different fitness class or changing your workout. If you struggle with sticking to your new eating habits, eat something new, but still healthy. Number 9. Variation Variation works similar to novelty. Mix things up. Perform fewer reps and more sets. Choose a different route for your daily jog. Add new spices to your staple meals. Small changes can be more than enough to encourage you to stick to your goals. Let's recap dopamine, your enemy, and your friend. Dopamine makes you anxious to get a reward triggered by a specific cue. Identify what makes you crave things you want to give up and wait until your craving fades away. Don't obsess about getting rid of the thoughts of your desires from your head. It will be counterproductive and make you even more prone to give in. Accept all thoughts that come up in your head and let them go naturally without tension. Use dopamine to get you anxious to perform actions that will bring you closer to your goals. Associate a specific cue, like putting on your workout shoes, with the hope of a reward like a healthy and tasty smoothie afterward.